Pat Love with Pat's Two Cents. Have you taken poison lately? Have you given it to your children, your family members, your friends, your co-workers? Well, let me tell you why you should kind of avoid poison. Poison, according to the dictionary, is spite, venom, bitterness, cancer, corruption, pollution. People give poison to murder. Okay. They poisoned his mind with prejudice, embitterment, corruption. I'm telling you, when you look at poison, you don't realize all the harm it really can do. But some of you are living, feeding, breathing poison. 24-7, even when you sleep, the poison is churning in your gut, in your system, in your being, in your fiber. Why? Again, because of unforgiveness and hurt. Somebody back there hurt you deeply. Some of you men rape women and beat women because of the contempt you have for your mothers. And the contempt you have for them is because of what they did or did not do for you. How they were there for you or how they abused you. We don't realize how the things of the past can shape us. Remember I talked about blackouts? Well, I was loaded with poison from rejection. Rejection from my mother. Rejection from kids in school. And ridicule. I held it in. And I held it in. And I held it in. Yeah, because we think we can handle holding in that kind of mess. I was in elementary school, and this girl that I happened to really like, I thought she was really a nice person, and I still do. I think she was, but she was, there was a bad day for her, and we were standing in line. Let me tell you how stupid stuff can jump off. We were standing in line, waiting for our lunch in the cafeteria. I was talking, I talk with my hands, yeah, I'm very dramatic, and my hand hauled off and hit her in a very sensitive area. I didn't mean to. I liked her. I wasn't trying to be crazy. But she hauled off and slapped me. I mean, it was like a reflex. Well, we didn't fight. I just apologized and said, I wasn't trying to hurt you. Now, the reason I say it was a sensitive area, she and I were in the exact same stage of development. So I understood she and I were the same size. We were both the tallest kids in the class. We were both developed beyond our years. We were both wearing training bras. I mean, it was like you could just see it. Okay. I don't Well, I don't know if she was wearing training bras, but she and I were the same size in every way. And when, where my hand hit was on her little developing bosom. And I remember when I bumped my own as a kid, or I ran, I told my mother that they hurt. They were hurting me. So that's when my mother said, okay, it's time for training bras. I was only eight. And this girl and I were both eight or nine years old. So check this out. I apologized. I told her I said it wasn't, I didn't mean any harm. And I was sincere. Well, that afternoon, before we left the lunch line, the kids were saying, she's going to beat you up at 3.30. You know, our kids always want to start a fight so they can have their entertainment. So I was going up to the principal's office to tell them that there was going to be a fight or that somebody was trying to start a fight, and I was one of them, but I didn't want to do it because I didn't mean the girl any harm. And the kids came and got me before I could get to the principal's office. 
and dragged me out to the schoolyard. Now, I was easily intimidated, so I didn't fight against them. I let them push me around. <laughs> and now this girl, Margarita, and I are standing looking at each other. And I'm looking at her like, this is stupid. I don't want to fight. <laughs> I don't have any. And I told her, I don't have anything against you. Well, she's standing there because they're pushing her too. And we're both pushed into a fight that I could tell neither one of us wanted to get into. So whatever she, whatever her day was like, and whatever the sensitivity, sensitivity will make you fly off at the handle if somebody hits a sore spot, that is an emotional fact. You and I both know it. Well, with her, it was either emotion mixed with physical or strictly physical, but I hit a sore spot. Now, the kids kept pushing us into each other, and we're into this fight. Now, I'm telling you this for a point, to show you how dangerous it is to keep pent-up emotions from everybody else's hurts and all the hurts of the past, and you never vent it and get it out, and all of a sudden you explode in the wrong place on the wrong person at the wrong time and in the wrong way. And this girl and I were pushed into a fight. And before you know it, we're, folks are pulling hair. So she's got my hair. And I'm thinking tender-headed. I'm tender-headed. Listen, I'm tender-headed. This is just coming to me now. This is why I know this has got to be God because I didn't even expect to talk about this. But I, I was tender-headed. Not now, but when I was young, I was tender-headed. And she grabbed my hair. And she was pulling it. And all it was hurting so bad. All I could think of was, I've got to stop her from hurting my head. I've got to stop. It was bringing tears. It was hurting. So I'm strategic now. I'm thinking, how do I get her off of my hair? And I grabbed, her hair was longer than mine. So I grabbed her hair and I wrapped it two or three times to get a good grip. And because I was so athletic, I overpowered her in strength. And I walked her. She still had a grip on my hair. And I walked her over to the schoolyard wall. Listen to this. And when I walked her over to the schoolyard wall, all I thought about was protecting myself, not hurting her. But this was the only way I could make her let go of me, was to hurt her. So, bam, I'm bashing her head up, bam, against the wall, bam. After about the third bam, I cannot tell you what happened. Yours truly, totally blacked out. I didn't faint. I didn't fall on the ground. I did damage I didn't even know I had done. The next thing I knew, it was like, we're at the wall. And then the next thing I know, somebody's grabbed me from my waist. It felt like a man's strong hands, and it was, because they had monitors, adult monitors that would keep the kids in control. And this guy picks me up off the ground and flings me away to separate me from her. Now, I don't have her hair in my hands. We are approximately 25 to 50 feet away from that wall. And I'm looking, and I'm looking at Margarita, and I'm wondering, I'm looking at all the people that weren't there before. How did I get here? We were over there. How come I'm not still, why is she not still pulling? I couldn't figure it out. I had totally blacked out. I believe all of the anger, all of the rage, all of the frustration and resentment came out all at once, and my mind totally shut off. I don't remember to this day. The kids told me, you had Margarita on the ground, and you were standing there kicking her and kicking her all in her stomach. You were kicking her, and you wouldn't stop. I didn't have a bruise. I didn't have a scratch. I didn't have a sore spot. I felt no pain. But she was bent over, listen, in that split second, which was a split second for me, she was bent over, 
holding her stomach, face soaked and dripping with tears. It made no sense to me. We were at the wall. I had your hair, you had my hair, and we were doing the wall bang. How did we get over here? How many of you could have an experience like that where you're not kicking or you're not punching or but you're actually stabbing or you're shooting? You just go off and your mind shuts off. That's the danger. Had I had a knife, had I had a gun or a big stick, who knows what I would have done to her. And I wasn't angry with her. I just didn't want to be hurt. But something rose up in me and I blacked out. It's the only time in my life that still freaks me out. It's the only time in my life I blacked out like that where I cannot remember what I did or what happened. I don't know if she did anything to me. After the hair thing, it's a total blank. Now, You've heard of people in court saying, I don't remember shooting my kids. I don't remember beating my wife to death. I don't remember stabbing everybody in the family. I don't remember. Trust me when I say it. that is possible for a person to do crazy stuff and not remember a thing. Because that's from allowing so much anger to boil up until it, it, it does a volcano eruption and all of it comes out on the wrong person at the wrong time in the wrong way. Do you want to take that chance? Do you want to allow Satan to enter you to do your, your loved ones harm like that? Because you have issues that you refuse to deal with? Men start talking. I don't care if you don't like dealing with feelings. Deal with them bad boys. Because those feelings will rise up and turn you into a deadly weapon of destruction. If you don't. Women, express those emotions. Cry. Pray to God. Both of you need to pray to God. I had to do it for years in order to stop blowing off at the handle. I had to be healed in order for the anger to be controlled, for the anger to be no longer existent, for the resentment to disappear. I had to give it all to God. That God is one and the only one that will thoroughly and perfectly diffuse the killer in you. He will diffuse you. He will diffuse the abuser in you. If you're hurting other people inadvertently or purposefully, go to God and get your help. Please, before you do something you won't be able to live with again for the rest of your life, before you do something to someone that is so irreversible. It will hound you and it will hurt them for the rest of your lives. Please, please get that thing checked. Get that poison out by the hand of God, by the loving, healing power of God. Amen. And I pray that God bless you so that you won't recognize yourself five years from now. In the name of Jesus, amen.